Hey friends, this is Trish with Crafting Cousins. Kay and I would like to thank you for stopping by and supporting our channel. Today's video kicks off Christmas in July. If you are making decor or doing craft shows, now is the perfect time to start crafting for the season. We have 20 upcycled Christmas decor DIYs that we hope you're going to love. So grab something cold to drink, sit back, relax, and let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this old bottle, a snowman hat that I got from the Dollar Tree a couple of years ago. I used it for another project and now we're gonna upcycle it. Some ribbon of choice. I'm using this that I got from the thrift store. Three buttons. I'm gonna pick some out of this bag that I got from the thrift store. Some white chalk paint. A jingle bell. I'm using a couple off of this bunch that I got from Dollar Tree. A chalkboard tag from the Dollar Tree. And my glue gun and some glue sticks. I love using old bottles in projects, especially ones that have a nice shape to them or are textured. And we have a restaurant that is right up the road from us that also sells alcohol. So every time I go in, I ask them if they have any empty bottles they'd like to get rid of. And they almost always have one or two. Now they're not always what I'm wanting, but I thought this one was beautiful. So I was thrilled when they gave it to me. Now the hardest part of this project is going to be getting the label off. These labels, I'm not sure what kind of glue they use, but they are not worried about it coming off. I used my heat gun and this flat metal spatula and I scraped as much off as I could. Then I grabbed some Goo Gone, you can get this from the Dollar Tree, and I use a paper towel and just clean off the rest of the glue that's on there. This takes it off really well, it's so easy to use, but it does leave an oily texture and the paint won't stick to that. So I do wash it with Dawn Power Wash, and then once it's dry, we can start painting it. I'm using white chalk paint for this one, and I have found that even with chalk paint, the best way to get it to stick to glass is to use one of these sponge brushes. I love the round one that you get from the Dollar Tree. I just dip it in my paint, and then I spounce it all over my bottle, giving it a really good coat. It also gave it a texture, and I thought that was a bonus because snow has a texture to it, and once this dried, I thought that it was absolutely beautiful. While our bottle is drying, I'm gonna work on a little sign. I took one of those tags and I used my heat gun to get the clothespin off the back of it. It was pretty stuck, but once I flipped it over and aimed it right at the glue, I was able to pop it right off. Then I'm going to use a white gel pen. You could also use a chalk pen, and I'm gonna write Merry Christmas. Now, I'm not crazy about my handwriting, but for something like this, I think it's fine. Now I'm going to punch a hole using my little hole punch thing there, and I did splinter it, so I just used a marker and filled it back in. Then I'm going to take some cording that I had in my stash, and I'm going to run it through the hole to use as a hanger. Now I decided I thought it would be better if I looped it through, so I'm just going to fold it in half, push the loop through the hole, stick the tails through the loop, and pull, and you have a pretty little hanger. Now that our paint is dry, I'm going to work on the snowman's hat. I want this to fit down as far on the neck as possible. So I took the lid to my paint and I dabbed it on top of the bottle. Then I stuck the hat to it and that showed me how big the opening for the bottle is. I cut out the cardboard using my Zacto knife and that's when I discovered that this thing is solid foam inside. I took my Zacto knife and I ended up digging it out. I also used one of those little tools like you take the lid off of a paint can with and I was able to get a lot of it out. I did have to open up my circle because I want this to go as far down as possible and it kind of um, has that lip thing on it so I needed to open it up so it would fit down. 
Now that we have our hat on, I'm going to take three of my buttons. We're going to line them up along his stomach. And then once I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to use some hot glue and glue it down. Y'all, I realize my snowman doesn't have a head, but that's okay. I want this to just be the impression of a snowman. Now I'm going to take my ribbon, I wrapped it around the neck, and then I'm going to trim that off and tie it into a double knot right around the neck of the bottle. This is going to be his scarf. Once I got that tied in place, I'm going to kind of twist it and turn it, and then I also scrunch it up to give it a little bit of movement. Since it has wire in it, it's easy to hold. I'm going to dovetail those ends, then I scrunch it up and I'm going to use just a dot of glue on it to hold it in place so that my scarf looks like that it's been blown there. Now we'll take our little sign that we made. I'm going to trim off those ends and use a little bit of hot glue and glue it right to the knot on my scarf. And then the last thing I want to do is add some jingle bells. I thought I was going to use that big one. It was way too big. So I grabbed this um, little doorknob hanger thing that has jingle bells on it and I cut two of those off and glued them in place and once we do that this project is complete simple and festive happy Christmas in July y'all Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this piece of 2 before that I literally got in the trash. It is all beat up, but I think it's going to make a cute project. It's about 10 inches long. I'm also going to be using one of these wood slices. This package came from Hobby Lobby and it is in the wedding section, so they do put it on sale occasionally. This burlap fabric that I got at the Dollar Tree, really good quality and a nice roll. Some jute covered wire. These florals that I found in my stash, a little bit of greenery and a little bit of berries. This acrylic paint in the color Coffee Latte. Some chalk paint in the color Imperial Ink and White. Some jute twine in a larger diameter. And some one and a half inch wired ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. It is a red and natural color. And finally, some wood glue and some hot glue. So the first thing I'm going to do is give this board a really good coat of that coffee latte matte finish acrylic paint. And you want to paint all six sides. I did leave a little opening on the side that's going to be the front. I just think the wood glue adheres better if it's raw wood to raw wood. So that's why I did that. This only took one coat, so I was pretty impressed with the coverage. Then I took my wood slice and I'm going to give it a really good coat of the Imperial Red chalk paint. I painted right up to the edge, but I did leave just a little bit of margin so that I didn't go over onto that raw wood edge because I do want it to show. And then I'm just going to take some wood glue pretty heavily right in the middle of the wood disc and I'm going to place it about an inch from the bottom of the wood. For the eyes for the piece, I'm just using one of my finger protectors. They actually sell these at the Dollar Tree for fingernail polish remover, but I'm tracing around them and just making two eyes at the top in that sort of oval shape. Then I'm going to take my black permanent marker and I'm just going to outline the eyes and also draw like a little rounded area in the bottom to be the dark part of the eyes. I took a small paintbrush and I'm going to fill in the top part of both eyes with the white Waverly chalk paint and this did take two coats. For the bottom part of the eyes, I'm going to fill in with the ink colored chalk paint also by Waverly. I used a really tiny brush and I tried to take my time and not have too many hiccups. Then I'll go back in with some more white Waverly chalk paint and do a little highlighting on the eyes and the sides of the nose, just a little bit to accent them. And then you want to go back in with the black paint pen and I'm going to outline the eyes where I got onto that permanent marker. And also I'm going to give him some eyebrows on the top. His eyebrows are not really sisters, they're more like cousins. 
The next thing I'm going to do is take this burlap fabric from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut two six inch pieces. We're going to be making his ears with this. So what I did was pleat one of the ends, I folded it first in half and then in half and half again to each side. And once I got it like I wanted it, I'm going to come in with hot glue and place hot glue in between all of those folds. And you do want to wear some finger protectors because that glue will seep through that burlap. And here I am making the second one again, placing little drops of glue in between all of those folds. Then I'm just going to shape the top of the ear and make sure that they're similar in size at least on the two pieces. Shaping the second one here also to match. And once you get it like you want it, you're going to apply quite a bit of hot glue there and kind of fold it down so that it sets to the left of the reindeer's head. And then we'll do the second one the same way. They sort of meet in the middle. And to make some antlers for the reindeer, this is kind of whimsical, but I'm going to be using that jute twine that is wired. You want to seal those ends with some glue. And then I take a big fat marker and I twist it around about 10 times and then cut off my piece. And you want to leave about an inch that is straight so that we can glue it onto his head. Here I am making the second one. Again, I'm going to seal those ends with hot glue so that it doesn't slip off of the wire. Twist it around a marker about 10 times. Cut off that excess, leave about an inch at the bottom. Then I glue those two pieces that were longer, the two inch pieces together side by side. And then I place glue in between his ears and hold that down until it sets. Now to make a bow, it is going to be very simple. I'm going to cut off, oh, about six or eight inches of my jute twine. Then I just shape my ribbon into the most simple bow ever and cut off those tails, which are about three and a half to four inches long. And then I'm just going to take that jute twine, wrap it around twice, and then I tie two knots at the back and then cut off the excess and give it a fluffing. Then we'll just glue it simply here towards the front and we'll cover up all of that mess that we made. I took two of the green leaves that we had in our stash and I'm going to glue one to the right and one to the left, sort of behind the bow. Further accent it with some berries on the right and the left there. And with that, our project is complete. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this chunky cross that I found at Goodwill Outlet for 49 cent. Now, I think it's cute the way it is, but I have an idea that we can transform this piece into a Christmas piece. This design that I found on Cricut Design Space, now I did print it and I'm using it like a JPEG, but you can purchase it from Cricut and also use it with your cutting machine. Some Waverly chalk paint in ink, a piece of chalk, my Arteza white gel pens, and I'm also going to use a white paint pen. Now, as I said earlier, I do really like this cross just the way it is. It is old and faded though, and I thought that it would be perfect for this idea that I had of a piece for Christmas. I had seen this design on Cricut and I loved it and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I just had to find the perfect piece to put it on. When I saw this cross, it I knew immediately that that's what I wanted to do with it. So we are going to give it a fresh coat of paint Paint. I'm painting it with my Waverly chalk paint in ink on the front, the back, and the sides, and we'll set it aside to dry. Once our paint is dry, we're going to transfer our design onto it, and this time I'm going to use a piece of chalk and scribble all over the back of my design, then I lay it on my project and I'm going to trace over it. This is going to transfer it onto my project. Now, you guys see us do this all the time. If you're using dark paint, you're going to scribble on the back with a piece of chalk. And if you're using light colored paint, you'll scribble on the back with a pencil. But either way, it's going to transfer it to your project. If you don't have carbon paper, this is a great way of doing it. Now, yes, I do have a Cricut and I love my Cricut. 
but we like to show you guys how you can do projects even if you don't have one and for this one in particular I like this method the best because once I was finished it actually looked like it was painted on and it had the exact look that I was wanting. Now I'm going to start off with my Arteza white gel pen and I do my fine lines on true and my stars and then I'm going to outline the thicker pieces. Now you don't have to use these kind of markers. You could use any white paint pen. They do have fine tip ones. If you have a steady hand, you could use paint and a brush to fill this in and it would be just as nice. My hand's not always so steady and I don't stay in lines really well. So that's why I chose to use these pens because I feel like I have more control over them. Now, once I got the bigger letters outlined, I came back in with a white paint pen and filled it in. Now, I could have done this with my Arteza pens but it would have taken longer and you do kind of get it looking a little streaky because you know it's laying the ink down but it does have to join it together you could also just come in with a small brush and some paint and paint this in as well now you can leave this piece exactly like it is i think that it's really pretty just like it is but y'all know me I'm a little bit extra and I like to give my pieces something else and in this case I wanted something to give it a little bit of character something to draw the eye and something to kind of make those edges pop to me they just kind of blended in so I grabbed my Arteza white gel pen and I'm just doing some wiggly lines around the edges I go back in and fill them in some because when I did it just once I didn't think that it looked complete but you don't have to do this you can totally leave it like it is once I got this on this project was complete Hey y'all, it's Kay. Let's use some recycled wood that I got out of the trash and make a cute set of stacked presents. I'm going to use six pieces of board. The first one is 10 and a half by 12 and a half and two and a half by 14 and a half. That will be present one. The second one is 10 by 12 and three and a half by 12. The third set of boards are eight by eight and one and three quarters by nine. They are the same width. I'll need some paint. I have some chalk paint in fern, crimson, and white. I'm also going to be using this chalky finish paint by Krylon as a good base coat because my pieces are pretty large. I need some ribbon. I got these from Hobby Lobby for 50% off in the Christmas section. I'm using wood glue and hot wood glue sticks. Some ovals that I cut on my cameo silhouette and some painter's tape some chenille stems, some Cricut tools. This Merry Christmas sticker that I cut on my Cameo silhouette, a hammer and some small nails, and a pencil as well. This floral pig, and these paint sticks left over from another project. And then several tools from my stash. All of my pieces have now been painted with the Krylon chunk paint to give them a nice base. Now I'm working on the lids for all of my presents. The first one, I'm going to paint red. The second one, I will paint in the green color. And the last one, I'm going to leave the white chalky paint. And there is all three of our lids for our gift boxes. Box number one is the largest present. I'm going to begin applying these circle stickers that I have in a random pattern across the box. They are really the letter O, so it's in two pieces. I'm going to keep that center piece for right now, and I'm going to place them onto my board. I actually used the Dollar Tree clear contact paper to lift up my stickers and place them down. And I just randomly keep applying them till I get a pattern I want. And after I do that, I'm going to remove all of the contact paper from the top. I'll burnish it down before that. 
and I'll also burnish it again once I remove the contact paper. This is just kind of a cheater method, honestly, for painting circles on a project. Now I'm taking that green chalk paint and I'm going to begin applying it all over my board. I'm going to paint the edges and of course the front of my present. And once I do that, I'm going to remove just the center of those letter O's. I made them more of an oval that I didn't keep them exactly round. I just wanted kind of a whimsical effect. And then I'm going in with the red chalk paint and I'm going to paint carefully just the center of the O's. There is some margin for error. You'll see that when I remove the outer part. So you don't have to be too exactly careful but you just want to cover it well. All of my chalk painting today, by the way, took two coats. And now I'm going to remove the outer part of the S and that will leave a white circle. So I have a double circle. I've got my red and my white in there. And now I'm going to apply the top piece of my present I'm going to use some wood glue and some hot wood glue. And then I'm going to reinforce it on the back by putting one of those paint stirrers. I glued that as well. And I also secure it with some really small nails. And now for box number two. I'm going to first begin by applying my box top to my box bottom. I'll just put on some wood glue and some hot wood glue to hold it fast. Center it up as best I can, and then I'm coming back in with some nails to secure it well. And now I'm going to apply my vinyl words, Merry Christmas. I just center them as best I can and peel off the backing once I've burnished everything down. And then I'll use a couple of leaves from that floral pick, and I'm going to glue them right to the upper right corner of my box. Put down a couple of leaves and then I'll just put a few berries in the middle. And now we begin package number three by measuring in at one inch from all of the edges. And that helps me apply my first tape, which is my three quarter inch painter's tape. And then I measure in four and a half inches from the side. And that's how I'm going to apply a thinner stripe that I made from just some leftover vinyl. It's about half an inch wide. And I'm going to apply it four and a half inches in from both of those sides. And then finally at one inch, I'll finish off with my three quarter inch painter's tape. And now I'm taking my red chalk paint and painting all of the edges, and then I'll paint in between all of my pieces of tape. I don't just go and swipe. I gently go from each side of the piece of tape so I have as little bleedage as possible. There will still be a little of touch up along the way, but actually not a whole lot. This is going to give us kind of a candy cane striped look. Not a perfect candy cane. Here's the best part, taking off the tape. I love this part, and you can see I do have some touch up I'm going to fix. And now we'll apply the top to our box. I'm just going to lay it on the back of the board, trace around it with a pencil, use some wood glue, and of course that hot wood glue, and then I'll just press it in. And that's our third package. I love how it looks. Every Christmas present needs a bow, so I'm using my Easy Bow Maker, and I'm going to make five inch loops with this green one and a half inch ribbon, and I will do two loops on each side. You just twist it as you put it into the wooden pegs, and that's how you keep the ribbon the right side up. And then I come in with my red, and I make my loops just a tiny bit smaller, 
and again putting two on each side. This ribbon is also one and a half inch. Now I'm taking my two and a half inch ribbon and I know this is backwards because normally you put the smaller ribbons on the top. But you know what? I wanted the bottom ribbons just to give some color and the top ribbon, it's my showpiece. And then I'm going to use a zip tie and tighten it in the back, placing a chenille stem inside first. Tighten it up and cut it with my wire cutters. And then I'm just gonna fluff. Every bow needs a lot of fluffing. Dovetail my ends. And there it is, a pretty bow. I wanna show you guys how I joined this. As you can see, this is all scrap lumber. I literally took it out of my husband's scrap piles. This is one I had painted on. Later, I'm going to come back and I'm going to make this look real pretty by giving it a good coat of white paint. But I want you to see how it's joined. These are those scrap five gallon paint sticks that I used and I nailed and glued them into both pieces. As you know, I joined the top to the bottom here with this small paint stick. These are a lot thicker, so I put a broken piece of a small one in between there, and that gave me the thickness I needed to compensate for this board. And so I nailed these in and glued them down, and that's a good support for my gifts. And I'm going to do the top one the same way. I'm going to glue a craft stick to the back of my present at an angle, and that's how I will attach my bow. The bow was sitting down too low on the package, so I had to compensate for that, because I do love a big bow, y'all. Hey friends, thanks for stopping by. Don't miss our latest videos every Wednesday and Sunday at 7 p.m. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this shutter that I got from Habitat for Humanity Restore. It is a large shutter and I paid $8 for it. Some cardboard, I had this left over from where I bought a desktop. When you see this again, I will have traced my shutter on it and cut it out. You just want to make sure that it's going to fit on the back. Some wording that I printed from my computer an Arteza white gel pen, my heavy duty stapler, some glitter stickers from the Dollar Tree, a piece of chalk, and my Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color Red Apple. So the first thing I had to do was remove the um, hinges and the piece from the side of my shutter. I just want just the shutter. So I took my screwdriver and took out all the screws and then I had to slide it out. Be careful when you remove these. I don't know if it was just this one, but I almost busted my shutter because I was trying to pull it off instead of slide it out. I didn't know it was slid in. Now I'm just going to clean it up. It was quite dirty and cleaning made a world of difference, but that's what happens when you get things from the thrift store or the restore. You're always going to want to clean them. Now we're going to take it outside and we're going to use our Rust-Oleum spray paint and give it, I ended up probably doing two good coats front and back. Now that my shutter is completely dry, we are going to attach the cardboard to the back of this. Now what I'm calling the back is the part that has the lever on it that will move the shutters up and down. I wanted to kind of secure that and you want to make sure that your cards aren't going to fall through once you put them into your shutter. So I took my heavy duty staple gun and I just went around and did Quite a few staples all around it. You do as many as you think you need to make it secure. Now that we have our cardboard on the back, I want to put the words Merry Mail on the front. 
if you don't have a cutting machine this is the best way I have found to do it unless you have a pretty handwriting if you have a pretty handwriting you could totally just freehand this the way that I do it is I print off the words from my computer and then I cut them out and I color on the back of it with some chalk. I lay it onto the front of my project and then I just trace over it with a pencil and this is going to transfer the words to my project. Once the words are transferred, I'm going to use my white Arteza gel pen to fill them in. Now I did try to use my Sharpie oil based pen but I guess it was the kind of paint it was, it would not take. It just kind of bubbled up and went away. You couldn't even see it. But this gel pen worked perfectly. It filled in and it looks great. Now that I have my words on there, I thought it was still just a little plain. So I grabbed these little snowflake stickers that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just kind of put some all around the top just to give it a little something extra. And once you get these on here, this project is finished. It's Kay. Let's grab a few materials and we'll make a cute Christmas project that's going to look great on your mantle or sitting on a table. I'm going to be using these 2 by 2s that I literally thrifted from the trash in a curb alert. I'm going to be using this 3D craft kit that I got from the Dollar Tree. It is Mary and Joseph and Baby Jesus and I just love it, y'all. That was a great find. And one of these cute chunky stars that I also got at the Dollar Tree. Some wood filler. Mine is paintable and stainable. I'm going to use some Waverly chalk paint in the colors Crimson, Fern, and I end up using some ink as well, which is a black color. I'm going to use some acrylic paint in gold and also one with some glitter flecks in it. Some light yellow paint. The color is Daybreak, and this is acrylic paint by Folk Art. Some vinyl letters that say wise men still seek him. You could also use stickers that you get at the Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby. And finally, you need some kind of glue to put it all together. I'm going to be using my hot glue. So the first thing I'm going to do for this project is start preparing my star because it needs time to dry. I'm going to fill those holes at the top on both sides with the wood filler, scrape it off with a gift card, and let it dry. The shorter of my two two by two pieces is six inches. I'm going to be painting it on all of the surfaces that are shown, both ends and all of the sides. The longer of my two pieces is eight inches long, and I'm going to be painting it in the crimson Waverly chalk paint, and again, painting all of the edges and the bottom and the side. For the star, I'm going to be painting the edges and the front and the back at first with this Daybreak Yellow Acrylic Paint. This is just like my primer coat so that the gold will cover nicely once I put it on. And for my next coat, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the Acrylic Gold Paint. I think this one's called Real Gold. And I'm going to paint all of the edges and the front and the back with it. For the last step, I'm going to take that Glitterific glue paint and I'm going to start in the center and just put a glob of it and spread it out toward the edge and that worked the best, y'all. I have been working with this stuff for two weeks and I finally figured it out. And then for the edges, I just put a very light coating and I don't coat the back. And for the last thing on the painting for this project, I'm going to be painting our Mary and Joseph and little baby Jesus in the black chalk paint called ink. I love this kit so much, y'all. I'm going back and try and find a second one before they all get sold. I'm using clear transfer tape to put my words onto my blocks of wood. For the green one, it's going to say wise men. I just place it down as centered as I could get it, and then I use my scraping tool to burnish it down and pull off the backing. And then I go to the second one, and I'm putting in still seek him. The spacing was wrong between seek and him, so I cut it apart. Well, that led to a different problem. Once I got it burnished down, I did not like the spacing on the far right side, so I took it out to my table saw, and I cut off half an inch. I just thought it was better balanced that way. But once I cut it, I had to repaint it again. Y'all know I couldn't leave it. 
but that turned out well. When you make a mistake, you just have to fix it. Either I could have taken the words off and started again, or I could come in and do what I did, or you can even add a little embellishment at the side. So there are ways to save your project and you don't have to trash it. Now let's start putting it together. I'm going to use hot glue. I'm just going to place some on the bottom of the green so that I don't go off the side. And I'm going to center it as best I can on each side, about three quarters of an inch in from each side. And then we'll take some glue and place down the star on top as well. I'm coming in about a quarter inch from the edge in the back, not exactly right in the middle because we need to place down our Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. And I'm putting the middle one on first. And then I just trace the sides so I know where to put my glue. And then I'm using my precision tip glue gun. And I'm just placing those items to the right and the left. And I really love how this turned out. I'm really happy with it, y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. This is a project that I did back in 2020 and it's really one of my favorites. My grandkids loved this project. I took this old sign, I had gotten it from the thrift store and I sanded on it to try to take off some of the stuff that was already on there. There was some raised areas on it. And then once I got it sanded down, I came back in with some Waverly chalk paint in white and gave it a good base coat. Once that had dried, I'm going to come back in with some red acrylic paint and paint over that. Now. Y'all know I love to use chalk paint, but this was during the pandemic and we were trying to use what we had. So I did use the acrylic paint, but the white chalk paint gave me a good enough base that I only had to use one coat to get the coverage that I wanted. If I hadn't used that chalk paint as a base, I would have had to use probably three or four coats of the red to get a good coverage. Once we get this painted on, we're gonna set it aside and let it dry. Once my paint is dry, I'm gonna take this printout that I made. All I did was type up Ho, and then I made a Santa belt and buckle and typed in Days to Go on it. And I'm going to use some carbon paper and transfer this to my sign. Now, if you don't have carbon paper, you can also scribble on the back with a pencil, but the carbon paper shows up really well. I traced on Ho 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 and my belt and the days to go. Then I'm going to come back in with some black chalk paint and I'm going to paint over my belt. Now I intended to try to paint around the days to go, but it was just too tedious and y'all, I don't have the patience for that. So I just painted over my belt and then I'll come back in and redo the days to go once my paint dries. The beauty of the chalk paint is that you can easily transfer it on top of it and it's going to pop off of that. Then I'm going to come back in with some white chalk paint and a small paintbrush and I'm going to paint in my ho ho ho. Once I get that done I'm going to come in with some gold metallic acrylic paint that I have and I'm going to paint my belt buckle and then I'm going to take some white chalk and I'm going to scribble on the back of my paper and I'm going to transfer the days to go on there. This is going to show up really well and y'all this works perfectly when you have dark colors. Now to make my belt buckle really stand out and have a little bit of shimmer to it, I'm going to paint some Mod Podge around my belt buckle. Then I'm going to pour my gold glitter right on top of that and dump off the excess. And I love how this made our belt buckle look. Then I'm going to come back with a small paintbrush and some white chalk paint and I'm going to fill in my days to go letters. Now I did try to stay inside the lines, but it doesn't have to be perfect y'all. That's the beauty of DIY. 
Now we are going to work on our ho ho ho. My white paint is dry and so I'm just going to paint over the letters with my Mod Podge. Then I sprinkle on some of this iridescent glitter and shake off the excess and this gave it a little more sparkle and a little something extra. Now we can take a piece of chalk and we can write in the days that are remaining to Christmas. The last thing I wanted to do was distress my sign a little bit, so I took a brush and some of my white chalk paint, and I'm just going to dry brush around the edges and highlight those lines in the sign, and once we do that, this project's complete. For this Trash to Treasure project, I'm going to be using two boards that I pulled from my husband's scrap heap. One board is 31 inches long by 3 and a half inches wide, and the other board is 16 and a quarter inches long by 3 and a half inches wide. I will need some glue. I'm going to use a combination of Mod Podge, some wood glue, and my hot glue gun. I also need one and a quarter inch painter's tape, a paintbrush, some white chalk paint, and some black and white acrylic paint as well. Some letters I ran off my computer. They are about three and a quarter inches tall, and some red glitter scrapbook paper, and some assorted tools like scissors and a pen. And the final items are some red and black check ribbon and a small three inch wreath that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. I cut two six and three quarter inch long pieces out of the shortest board and out of the long board I cut two fifteen and a half inch pieces. I used my shorter pieces as my brace. Here I am fitting them to the boards so I can make a palette of sorts. I used hot glue and also wood glue to attach it and it actually did a really good job. And now I'm going to coat the entire board with some white chalk paint. This will give me a great base and a jumping off point. I'm going to be painting a buffalo check pattern on the base of my sign. I will need to mix black and white paint to come up with a really dark gray and a really light gray. And of course I'll use some black paint at the end. First thing I want to do is tape off my sign. The footage got lost along the way so I'm going to be painting a scrap board to make sure I show you the procedure that is needed. So I'm taping off my board and I will just remove every other tape in between to give me a uniform check size. And now I'm burnishing down my tape. I actually did a really good job at that. I didn't remember that this tape was quite so sticky and it did pull up part of my white, but that can always be touched up. So now I'm painting the light gray in first. And then I will remove the tape while it's still somewhat wet. And then I'll come in and reapply the tape in between. And now I'm painting the dark gray in. And removing the tape while it's wet. And of course I did let it dry in between before I reapply tape. I'm covering up every other one. And now I'm finally putting in my black paint. And removing while wet. Let's move on to letters. I ran some off on my computer and then I just traced them on the back of my red glitter paper, just some scrapbook paper that I had on hand, and I'm simply going to cut them out. If you notice, I'm tracing the letters backwards. Don't forget that step. And then I just fussy cut them out. You could choose whatever font you like. I just scrolled through until I found the perfect J. My letters are about three and a quarter inches high. If you have a Cricut and you have a font you like, you could always cut them that way. And now I'm putting a white wash on my sign. I thought the black was just a little too bright, so I toned the whole thing down with some really diluted white acrylic paint, and then I simply wiped off the excess. You could skip this step if yours is not as bright as mine, or you like it that way. And now I'm taking a really small wreath and some red and black check ribbon, just making a simple bow, and I'm going to attach it to the top of the wreath, and this will be my O for my sign. 
I'm going to use a chenille stem to just tie it around my ribbon bow and then I'll attach it to the wreath with the same one. And I did come back with a piece of ribbon and place it over the chenille stem so you don't even see it. Now I'm using Mod Podge to attach my J and my Y to my sign. I just attach about half of it at a time and wipe off the excess glue. Actually, I'm just sort of blotting it. After I got half the J, I did half the Y. I just wanted to give it some time to adhere and that the glue wouldn't dry too quickly. And then I go back and I finish the rest of my J and then the rest of my Y. You could use regular glue to attach your letters. I just had Mod Podge on hand and I really like the hold it gives. And then finally, I'm going to take my wreath that I made and attach it in the middle with some hot glue. Eventually, this will stand on my mantle to decorate for Christmas. So I'm not worried about a hanger on the back. But if you wanted to hang it on the wall, it would be real easy to attach some kind of hanger on the back. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use a candy dish I picked up from the thrift store, but you can also get them from the Dollar Tree, a wine glass from the Dollar Tree, some ribbon, I'm using black and red chuck, some LED votive candles, some greenery garland ties, some leftover berries from a floral piece, some Waverly chalk paint, my glue gun and some glue sticks, some super glue fix all adhesive, and several tools from my work caddy. The first thing I did was remove the sticker from the wine glass, and now we're gonna unwrap our candy dish. We're going to be painting our wine glass and the top of our candy dish with our Waverly black chalk paint in the color ink. This did take three coats, or actually two and a half as my friend Wendy from White Sparrow Living says. <laughs> it takes two full coats and then it takes some touch up in some areas, so that makes two and a half coats. I wanted to use the black chalk paint because I like the flat finish that it gave. Now these are dry, so we're going to put this piece together. I take my candy dish and I use some of my super glue fix all adhesive. I put that on the bottom and then I use a little bit of hot glue and then I just stick it to the bottom of the wine glass, which has now become the top. Now we're gonna decorate it. You can see that I did not wait long enough for my glue to set, so my little dish has fallen off. That's okay, we'll glue it back on later. But for now, we're gonna take a piece of our ribbon and measure how much we need to go around the stem. And then I'm just going to cut that off and glue it into place. Now I'm gonna take my ribbon and make a simple four loop bow. I just loop it around itself. And then when I get to the last part, I like to run my tail under that top ribbon. I pinch it in the middle. I take a chenille stem. And then I secure it around the middle. I just twist it around there really tight to make my little bow. Now we're just going to fluff it up a little bit and we're going to dovetail those ends. That just means to fold that ribbon in half and cut it at an angle. And we'll use a little bit of hot glue to secure it to our stem. Now I'm going to take this garland tie and I cut off two small pieces and I'm going to glue one facing up and one facing down and kind of at an angle. Now I'm going to use these three berries off this floral piece that I had left over from another project and I'm going to glue those right in the middle. Now you can use any kind of berries, Dollar Tree has tons of them. We're going to do a quick repair on our dish. We'll take off that hot glue, put a little bit more, and then glue it back into place. And this time I let it actually set. <laughs> now we're going to put one of our votive candles in here. Make sure you don't use a real one, and then put our lid on. And there's our lamp post. These are so simple to make, and I think they are so elegant and so pretty. 
can't wait to use this as part of my Christmas decorations. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Today I'm going to be remaking this sign. It had been discarded and I rescued it from the trash. We'll come in and remove the vinyl from the outside in a few moments. The measurements of the sign are about 10 by 18, but we'll use just the inside. We'll use some chalk paint in the color plaster and black, this ribbon that looks very much like a blanket, and it feels sort of like it too. This candle ring that I got on clearance last year, and guess what? They have them again this year at Hobby Lobby. This truck ornament that I got at the Dollar General for just a dollar. And just a few tools. The first thing I'm going to do is come in here and use my utility knife and cut down the sides and remove this very heavy duty plastic type vinyl. I find quickly that I cannot remove the staples and that the back is going to come off. So guess what? That actually makes my job even easier. So I'll just take the back off and beat in all those staples so they're flat. And then I'm going to turn it over and actually paint what would have been the front side originally. I'm just changing this frame all around. But I could not get out the staples, and this side was actually perfect. So I began giving it two coats of this black chalk paint. I thought I was going to come back with some brown, but I liked the black so much, I just kept it. And now I'll give that backdrop two coats of this plaster color chalk paint. This is the side that used to be on the very front under the vinyl. And now I'm drawing a line right down the middle and then darkening that line up. We want this to look like two boards put together. So I'm going to smudge it with my fingers and then come back in with some paint. And that does several things. It smudges it further, but it also covers it up so it can't be erased. And then I come back with my frame and I'm going to draw a line on the inside measurements so that I know where my lines are going to fall once I put it all together. And then I smudge those lines as well. We're just aging our paint and giving it some character. I come in with some paint again. I just use my fingers because I found that's actually the easiest way. And if you take off too much, just add some more. And now I'm using some of that fix-all adhesive from the Dollar Tree and some hot glue. And I'm going to go ahead and put on my little red truck. It will help my spacing for when I put on my letters. I'm just placing it about an inch from the bottom. And then put down my sticker, I center it as best I can, burnish it, and then peel off the clear backing. It says I'll be home for Christmas. And now I need to place the backing back on the frame. I'm going to be using some small nails. They're about three quarter inch long. And I'm just going to pound them in in the corners and all around. And I'm taking that sawtooth hanger that was on the original sign here, and I'm going to put it back on so that I can hang my sign on the wall. Checking out the placement of my wreath, which is really a candle ring, and I'm going to cut just a length of ribbon so that I can hang it from the top. I'll just place it through there and go over the top of the frame and through that sawtooth hanger. And then I'm going to use my heavy duty stapler and just staple it into the wood. And then I'll flip it over and there's our sign. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this cabinet door that I got from Habitat for Humanity Restore for $2. These knobs that I got from the ReStore, I got all four of these for $2. Some Waverly chalk paint in white. Some wording that I printed from my computer. I'll put a link to the wording that I used in this video down below if you would like to use the same wording. Some caulk from the Dollar Tree. 
a jot permanent marker from the Dollar Tree, my drill, some of this pine garland from Walmart, and some pieces of greenery from my stash, some ribbon of choice, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I did was clean up this door really good. Most of this stuff is really dirty, so you're gonna wanna clean it. And then I grabbed my Waverly chalk paint in white and I started giving it a really good coat. I'm gonna paint the front and the sides of this. Um, the back is already pretty much white, but the front and the sides were really an off-white color, and I wanted them to be bright white. Now, as I was painting, I realized that I need to fill in that hole there where the knob was, so I just took some caulk and filled it in and then kept painting. Now, I've been asked about the eclectic pieces that I have been making for Christmas because they don't really follow a theme. And I started donating pieces that we make on the channel to the nursing home. I found out that a lot of people there never get anything. And it's nice for them to get a gift every now and then. And then for the Christmas season, I found out that the staff could use it to decorate the rooms for people who don't have decorations or the halls. So I've been making pieces that I thought different people may like so they could put them in their room. Now, once my paint is dry, I want to put my wording on. And again, if you have a cutting machine, you can easily do this with that. It always comes out looking clean and neat. But if you don't have a cutting machine, this is the perfect way of doing it. You can print off the wording that you want. There's tons of different fonts that you can get online. And then I print it out and I take a pencil and I scribble on the back of it. Then I'm gonna lay it onto my project and trace over it with a pencil and it transfers it onto that. You could also use carbon paper for this, but carbon paper has a tendency to smudge on white. Once I get my wording transferred over, I take a jot permanent marker, that's my choice, and I fill it in. I like these markers because one thing, you get two of them for a dollar, which is a great deal, but they have a terrific flow. They just flow out so nicely that it looks almost like paint. Now, you could also just use paint and a small paintbrush if you trust, you know, your hands. Mine can be quite shaky. And if you have a pretty handwriting, you could just freehand this and not even have to worry about it. Now I'm going to figure out where I want my knobs to be. I decided to use four on this. And then I'll just kind of pick them up and make a little mark right underneath them so I know where they're gonna be and I'll know where to drill. Then I put a piece of wood under my project because it always goes through and I drill through each one of those holes just opening it up. Before I put my knobs on, I'm going to go ahead and add a hanger to the back of this. And I'm just using a small sawtooth hanger. I get these in a big pack from Walmart, but you could use any hanger that you want. Then we are going to screw our knobs onto the front of this. It's really easy to do. You just poke your screw up through there and screw it on. Now I want to decorate this a little bit. I want it to have a little bit of Christmas cheer. So I grabbed some of this pine garland. I got it from Walmart. You get a big nine foot piece of it for like $2.76 and I've just been cutting pieces off of it and using it. And I play around with it and some of the greenery that I had left in my stash. But before I attach anything, I want to make a bow. I'm gonna take my ribbon and I wrap it around my hand six times. You see me counting to make sure I have six loops. And then I'm going to take another piece and I lay it across the bag. These will end up being the tails. I'm going to use a pipe cleaner and I just twist it around there in the center. This cinches it and holds it in place. And then we'll pull down our tails and pull out our loops. You're just gonna make sure you have three on each side and fluff them up. Then we will take and cut off our tails to the length that we want them. And I'm going to use a piece that I cut off and just wrap it there around the center and tie it in a knot. This is going to cover that pipe cleaner and it gives it a really pretty finish. Then I just fluff it up and I have a really pretty bow. I'm going to dovetail my ends just by folding it in half and cutting it at an angle. Now I'm gonna take that greenery and I'm gonna glue it right there into the middle at the top of my project. And then I'll glue my bow right there into the middle of my greenery. 
Now we're going to take some of that frosted fern. I just have a little couple pieces of that and I'm going to glue it in each side underneath my bow. And then I'm going to use a bunch of these little berries I had. I cut it in half and I will glue those down on each side. And once we get those attached, this project will be finished. love for you to take a moment and let us know what you think because your comments fuel our creativity. We're going to be recreating this sign from Kirkland's that's regular $59.99 on sale for $44.99. We're going to need some wood. I'm using this piece of Luan. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. You can get it at any hardware store. I happen to have some already in my garage. I'm cutting the piece at 20 by 24, which was the size of the original piece of art. I bought some one by two lumber at Lowe's and I had them cut it for me. I needed two 24 inch pieces and two 18 and three quarter inch pieces. They're a little rough, so I need to sand them before I paint them. I'm going to use this burlap bandana. It will be part of our background. It comes to a size of about 24 by 24, which is just perfect for this project. I have some florals that I got at the Dollar Tree, some red berries to go on the wreath, some red chalk paint from Hobby Lobby. I have some pine cones that I found in my stash. I need some black HTV vinyl that I'm going to use to make our word at the bottom of our sign. I'll just use my silhouette to cut that out. And then I need some greenery to make the wreath to go on the board. This is just some leftovers from last year. And finally, I need, of course, a paintbrush. I have a hot glue gun and the special Sure Bonder wood glue sticks. And now it's time to paint. I'm using that red chalk paint that I got at Hobby Lobby. It covered so well, I was shocked that I only needed one coat. I first covered one side and one edge of my boards and then I allowed them to dry before I come back and do the back side of each of the boards. One side of my board is really flat and that's what I use to attach it to my background and I don't paint that side. But I did paint all of the ends just in case there are any gaps I didn't want the raw wood to show. I wanted it to be a nice finished frame. The next thing I want to do is attach the burlap to the background of our frame. I'm going to be using some Mod Podge. I'm going to use a very generous coat and spread it out, doing a small section at a time. I finally just poured it out onto the frame. You need to move pretty quickly, but the Mod Podge really attached it very well. Make sure you smooth out all of those air pockets. And don't worry about the little imperfections you see. The Mod Podge will dry clear. And now I'm going to just trim off the excess because my board was 20 by 24 and my cloth was 24 by 24. And now I want to attach the wood sides. I'm going to be using a combination of regular wood glue and hot wood glue sticks. This is the first time I have used those and they actually worked pretty well. I'm going to put on the two long sides first. And then I will put on the top piece. I'm going to hold off on that bottom piece so that I can put on the word believe. That will give me some room to get in with my iron. And now I'm playing with that greenery and I want to turn it into a wreath. I'm going to fluff it out real nicely. I just cut off about a 31 inch piece and I just wired it together at the ends, just twisting it upon itself. And now I need my berries put in. I cut them with my wire cutters and then I just twisted them inside my wreath. I'll come back later and glue them in with a little hot glue. And now I have my pine cones. I'm going to take some floral wire and twist it around the ends of all three of them. And now I'll just wire them into my wreath. The original picture had three pine cones, so that's what I chose 
as well. And now I'm just gluing everything down with a little hot glue just to make extra sure that it is secure in the wreath. And now I'm going to place down my iron-on, which says Believe. I cut that out on my Cameo Silhouette, and then I'm using my iron to carefully iron it onto the burlap. I have a little screw that I placed at the top, and I'm using that to wire on my wreath. That will keep it nice and secure when I hang it on the wall. And now I'm going to attach the last piece of wood that goes at the bottom. I'm using again wood glue and hot wood glue sticks. And that pretty much completes our project. But I do want to distress it a bit because the one in the original was distressed. So I'm just using some fine sandpaper and I'll just go around my frame and highlight some areas. I love how this turned out. I can't believe I have less than $9 in this entire project. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use a ceiling fan blade that I got from Habitat for Humanity, some fleece, I got mine at Joann's, but you can get it from any craft store, a dust mop head from Dollar Tree, some ribbon, some chalk paint in white ink and pumpkin, a permanent marker, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. My Habitat for Humanity always has a bunch of these ceiling fan blades at their store and I knew that I wanted to use them to make something for this Salvage Saturday. I grabbed this one that was white on one side and I'm going to go ahead and paint it white on the other side. Y'all know that I like for my backs to be finished so I figured that the slick side would be perfect for that and I'll use my Waverly white chalk paint to paint the other side and that's going to give me a better canvas for painting on. Once my paint is dry, I take my fleece and I kind of measure it out to see how wide I need to cut it for the hat. And I go ahead and cut it all the way across. We'll use this for the hat and for the scarf. Once I got it cut, I just measured around my fan blade to see how big I needed it and cut that off. And now we're just going to use some hot glue on one side and fold over the other side and make a tube shape. Once we get that done, we'll gather it up at the top just to see how far down I need to cut to make my fringe. And then I just start making little cuts all the way across. And when we gather this up, it's going to give me that little fringe top that you see on like toboggans or something. I'm going to cut off a piece of my ribbon and gather this up at the top. And then we'll wrap our ribbon around a couple of times, tie it into a double knot and trim it off. And now we have a little hat. I'm going to insert my blade into my hat and my hat was a little bit big but that's okay because I just used my glue and kind of ruffled it up in the back and y'all it didn't look bad at all it actually looked kind of cute. Now we're going to take that dust mop and I figure out how wide a piece I want to cut and you see I'm kind of moving those fibers apart so that I can see the sewn line down the middle of it. This helps when you're cutting this so that it doesn't um, fray quite so badly. This fit perfectly around my fan blade, so I'm just going to use some hot glue and I'm going to glue it around all the way. And this makes a beautiful brim on my hat. Now I'm going to take the rest of that fleece and I was just kind of seeing how it looked on my fan blade. It was way too thick. I didn't need the same amount that I needed for my hat. So I cut it down and then I'm just going to kind of wrap it around and cut it off so that I know what dimensions I'm working with. Now I'm going to grab a pencil and I just sketch out a face for my snowman. I make two ovals for his eyes and then a little carrot nose and a crooked mouth. And then I'm going to use my pumpkin orange um, chalk paint and paint in the nose. Now you can use any orange paint that you have. You don't have to use chalk paint. This was what I had on hand. Now I like to use my permanent markers to fill in my eyes and my mouth. I just feel like that it gives me more control than paint and a brush does. And these jot markers from the Dollar Tree fill in so nicely. Now we've got our little snowman's face. We are going to take some 
ink chalk paint and one of those round foam brushes and give him three little buttons all the way down underneath his scarf. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue to glue down my little scarf here. This is just going to keep it from moving around. I didn't glue it hard. I just wanted to hold it in place. Then I'm going to take my scissors and cut some little fringe along the bottom of my scarf so that it matches my hat. I almost forgot, but I wanted to take some white chalk paint and a small brush, and you're just gonna make like little semicolons in his eyes, and this is just gonna give him a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of expression. To make a hanger for this, I'm gonna use a little more of that ribbon. I thread it into a darning needle, which is just a really large needle. I pull it through my fabric, and I did go down close to where it was glued so it would be more sturdy. Tie it into a knot, leave in a loop, trim off the ends, and then your project's finished. Hey y'all, this is Kay. Let's make a quick farmhouse Christmas ornament. I'm using this leftover piece from a project from a board at the Dollar Tree, this joy from the Dollar Tree, a big fabric square in buffalo check, some ribbon from my stash, some of these floral picks, some Mod Podge, some fix all adhesive from the Dollar Tree, and a few tools. First thing I'm going to do is take my Mod Podge and generously apply it to my little sign here. And then I'm going to, of course, smooth out my fabric and apply it to this really thick cardboard. This was left over from that scarecrow sign I did. Smoothing it out well, and then I'll apply a coat to the top as well. I'm cutting off about 18 inches of this black and white ribbon, crossing it, pinching it in the middle, and I'm going to use a piece of that thin ribbon to tie right in the middle to secure my bow. And I'll just trim up those edges and fluff it. I'm going to cut off some of this greenery from this floral pig, as well as a few of these berries. Cut off that excess fabric I left. I'm going to glue the greenery to the right and left at the top. Place the bow in the center and send some berries right in the middle of the bow to dress it up. And then I'll apply the joy with some fix all adhesive. Hey y'all, it's Trish. I love Goodwill Outlet. The outlet is where the regular Goodwill stores send stuff that didn't sell. They put it all in a bin and you get to dig through and find hidden treasures for almost nothing. On the day that I was there last week, they did bring out a new bin and it was full of Christmas items. I had so much fun going through this. Now let's see what we can make with what I found. For our first project, I'm going to use this adorable nativity family. I did find it in that bin, and I'm surprised that it didn't get broken. It was marked 99 cent, and I thought that it was well worth that price. This glass bowl that I also got out of the bins, you can get these from the Dollar Tree as well, though. A wooden circle plaque that I got from Hobby Lobby some floral foam that I'm going to cut off the bottom of this cone, a candle from the Dollar Tree, some self-adhesive moss from Walmart. You can also use the moss from the Dollar Tree, some greenery and some berries that I got from Dollar Tree and the thrift store, a furniture repair marker from the Dollar Tree. You could also use stain, some fix-all adhesive from the Dollar Tree, and my glue gun and my glue skillet. 
the first thing I'm going to do is stain that wooden circle. Now you could leave this without stain if you like how it looks you could also paint it i wanted mine to have that stained wood look though and my favorite way of doing that is to use these furniture repair markers now that it's stained i'm going to take my little nativity family and i'm going to use some of that super glue fix all adhesive for a stronghold and a little bit of hot glue for a fast hold and glue it right onto my base once we get them down, I'm going to take that glass bowl and I'm going to use some more of that super glue fix all adhesive right around the edge of it. And I will put two drops of my hot glue just to hold it until that sets and I sit it right on top of that. Now we're going to take a little bit of floral foam. I just cut the bottom off of that cone since it fits so well. And we're going to use some fix all adhesive and some hot glue to glue it to the bottom of our bowl. Now, I don't want to see that foam, so I am going to cover it with some moss. And I like using this self-adhesive moss that I get from Walmart. You can also get this from Hobby Lobby, but it is less than half the price at Walmart. And all you have to do is cut your piece off, then you remove the backing and stick it down. It is so much less messy than the stuff from the Dollar Tree. But if you don't have this or you can't find it, you can always use that. Once I got my foam covered then I start cutting pieces off of a greenery garland and I just punch a hole in my foam I stick my garland into my glue pot and I stick it into that foam I'm going to go around and kind of evenly space it out then I'm going to come back in with some of those berries and holly leaves and I'm going to kind of fill in I didn't have enough to go in between each one so I just kind of spaced them out this is to, to your own preference and we're going to be filling in with a lot of things so you don't have to do it exactly like I did if you don't like these kind of greeneries you could use any kind of florals to fill in the base of this now I'm going to take some of that frosted pick that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just cut pieces off and I go around and I put those in. This is just going to give me some different color, some different texture. Then I'll come back in and I'm going to fill in with some more of those red berries that I had. I just took them apart and kind of stuck them down in there. And then once I had it kind of the way I wanted it, I'm going to use a little more of that frosted pick. This one has some white berries on it, and we're just going to kind of stick it around in different areas. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to take some more of that garland. I form it into a circle, and I'm going to use some hot glue right there on the top of this and glue it down into that. And that's going to give me a base for my candle. Once we get that on there, we'll just put our candle in and this project is complete. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this decal that says, I'll be home for Christmas that I cut on my Cricut Explore 3. Y'all know I'm a Cricut girl and occasionally I have to take it out and dust it off and do some beautiful projects for you. I'm going to be using some white chalk paint by Plaid. I'm going to be using this black metal plate that I got from the thrift store. I think it originally had candles on it. Because I got it at Goodwill Outlet, it only cost me about a quarter. I'm going to be using some ribbon. The one on the left is wired, and I think it's about an inch and a half wide, and the one on the right is 7 eighths inches wide, and it is not wired. I'm going to be using some of these florals that I got from the Dollar Tree, some floral wire from the Dollar Tree, and also some Mod Podge. As with any thrifted project, you need to start by deconstructing it a little bit and giving it a good cleaning. And after I did that, I got out my white chalk paint by Plaid, and I'm going to give it a really good coat. Well, because this is metal, it actually took three coats, and I let it dry a good long time in between. And this would be a good time to use some spray paint, but you know what? It was raining at my house, so I just couldn't risk it. So I just sat back and enjoyed my time painting. Then I'm going to come in with Mod Podge and give it a really good coat on the entire plate just to seal in that paint and make it easy to put on our decal. 
And I use my little scraping tool and I'm going to give it a good burnishing so that I can peel off my sticker from the backing. And there it is all put together and peeled apart. Because the surface that I'm putting my decal on is at flat, I'm going to cut off the part that says Christmas, and that will just make it easier to apply and get it like I want it. So I go in with the word Christmas, and I'm placing it not at the bottom, just about an inch and a half from the bottom edge of the plate. And I'm going to peel off the backing, and that will just stick it down nicely right to our surface. And yes, it's going up over the side, but I didn't mind that at all. And now I'm putting on I'll Be Home For. It looks a little crooked on camera, but the decal was supposed to look like that. Now let's make a bow to dress it up at the bottom. I'm just making a very simple red and white check bow. I'm using a little floral wire and twisting it right around the middle to hold it in place. Then we'll do a smaller bow in the black and white check ribbon. Just pinch it there in the middle, and I'll continue wiring that on as well. And then we'll just cut that off, place a little glue at the bottom, and put on our bow. Now I'm going to add just a little poinsettia right to the middle, dress it up a little more. I don't think anything screams Christmas more than poinsettias. Little green holly on the sides. I decided I would just put it right under our bow, just a little peek of color. And that's pretty much it for this project. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this old wine bottle that my neighbor saved for me, this scarf that I got from the Dollar Tree, this leftover piece of dust mop that we had from an earlier project, some Waverly paint in scallion and maize, and then some dark yellow folk art paint, a permanent marker, I'm using Jot, some Mod Podge, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I'm going to do is cover my bottle with a thick coat of Mod Podge and leave it to dry. Now this step is totally optional. I feel like it helps the paint stick to the bottle better, but if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. But this was what I chose to do, so I put on a thick coat and left it to dry. Now that my Mod Podge is dry, I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in the color Scallion and I'm going to paint my bottle with it. Now I wasn't sure if this was going to be the right color and I actually pulled some other greens to mix with it, but I love this color. I think it looks so much like that weird green color that the Grinch has. Now that our bottle is dry, I'm going to take this scarf and I just cut off a big chunk of it. I wasn't sure exactly how long I needed it. And I started to try to fit it over my bottle and you can see that that seam split. And that's okay because I didn't need it to be this long. So I figured out how long I wanted it to be and cut it off. And then before I start putting it on, I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue right there on that seam and glue it together and that'll keep it from coming unraveled again. Now we're just going to fit it over our bottle and y'all this barely fit. I was lucky to get this on here, but I just use a little bit of hot glue and I glue it down and it holds it into place perfectly. I put some glue on the back of it and then I pulled it down as much as I could and I glued the front and sides. Now we're going to take that piece of dust mop and it fit around here perfectly, but it was a little too wide so I cut off a little strip of it and then I'm just going to use my hot glue and glue it down around the base of the hat and around the bottle. This is going to hold everything together. Now I'm just going to use a pencil and I like to sketch out my face before I start using paint. Y'all, I am not an artist and this helps me to be able to get my dimensions somewhat right. Now again, it's not always perfect, but it works for me. I sketch out some eyes and some eyebrows. I do a little squiggly for the nose. And then I'm going to use some yellow paint to paint in those eyes. I started off with this maize color from Waverly because I wanted to use chalk paint, but it wasn't dark enough. So I ended up using some dark yellow acrylic paint on top of it and then letting it dry. 
Now I'm just going to use a permanent marker to fill in the nose and the eyebrows and that little piece in the center of the eye. But I didn't like my mouth, so I erased it and I drew it back in with my pencil. And now I'm just going to use a finer tip um, marker and go in and fill in my mouth. I'm going to do that little piece at the top and a little on the bottom. And then with that, this project is finished. As easy as that. y'all it's Kay for this project I'm going to be using a 5x7 wooden frame this happens to be one that I got at the thrift store and I'm going to reuse it but you could use one from the Dollar Tree or Walmart or anywhere I'm going to be using this cute plaid ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby it's about an inch wide and it is wired I'm going to use these wooden stickers that I got from Hobby Lobby they look very much like Scrabble tiles I just love them some plaid chalk paint in the color Imperial, some florals from the Dollar Tree, some floral wire from the Dollar Tree, and finally my hot glue gun. When I got this 5x7 set of frames, they were hinged together in the middle, so now I'm going in and I'm going to remove the hinges from the second one. You may have seen me do the first one in a video previous to this. So I'm taking out the backing and the glass, and I'm going to go in and fill in all the holes that I made with some wood filler. And then I'm coming in and I'm going to paint my frame in this beautiful imperial red. It did take two coats, but all in all it gave really good coverage and I was happy with the results. I'm kind of a traditionalist at heart and I love red and green for Christmas. I'm going to cut my pieces apart for my sticker and I kind of play around with it and I finally decide I'm only going to use the word believe. But before I do that, I'm going to make a very simple four loop bow with my wired ribbon. And then I'll just use a little floral wire to secure it in the middle. Cut off that end. And then I'm going to start putting on the word believe at the bottom with those Scrabble tiles. I tried to line the eye up right in the center and work to the left and the right. But I'm not going to lie to y'all, I actually come back and I took these off off camera and I did them again because they ended up at the end being a little bit off center and I am just enough OCD that that drove me crazy. So watch your placement and use your plastic to do it, not like I did it kind of freestyle. We'll put a little bow right there on top going to replace the backing and the glass and put everything back together and now let's add a little greenery I'll put some holly leaves to the side and I'm going to put some berries right in the middle that will cover our wire and we'll just dress it up and make it look very much like a traditional Christmas Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use half of a shutter that I got from Habitat for Humanity. You may remember that I used the other half for a patriotic project, and now we're gonna use this one for a Christmas project. I find these kind of shutters all the time at Habitat for Humanity for very little money. We're gonna use part of a greenery garland that I had left over from last year. I like to get these at Christmas and cut pieces off and use them in different projects. Some jingle bells that I got from the Dollar Tree. They have these in red, silver, gold, and I think white. We're going to use some ribbon of choice. I'm using this that I got from Hobby Lobby for 50% off. A chenille stem to match our ribbon. A sawtooth hanger. My heavy duty staple gun. And my glue gun and some glue sticks. Now this one is going to be a really quick and easy project. I think those are some of the most beautiful ones that you can make. 
I chose not to paint my shutter. I love that chippy old look that it has. So I'm gonna leave it as is. I took my piece of garland and I lay it on there to see how I want it to lay. And I knew I needed to have a piece at the top that I could secure it with. So I just pulled one of those pieces out and then I just kind of go down into it and twist it back around to fill it in. Now I'm going to take my jingle bells and they come with those little gold strings in there. So I'm gonna take one and I just put it through the opening at the top of the jingle bell and I tie a double knot. Then I figure out where I want it in my garland and I just wrap it around, tie another double knot and trim it off. This is going to hold these where I want it. Now I'm just gonna continue to go down my garland and add in my bells. I do use four of these but you can use as many as you would like to get the look that you want i am using the red ones i love using red and silver for my christmas decor but you can get these in silver gold white so you could do this to match any theme that you have i love the simplicity of this project and i think it just gives a beautiful touch of christmas to any room before we add anything to the front of our shutter, I want to go ahead and add a hanger to the back. So I'm just gonna take a sawtooth hanger and hammer it on. Now we're gonna put our garland back on top and I'm gonna flood it with some hot glue. And then I'm gonna use my heavy duty staple gun and put a couple of staples in there just so I know it's going to hold. I want to make a bow for this, so I'm gonna take my ribbon and loop it over and make sure it's the right size. Then I'm gonna make a loop on the other side and I fold it up to make sure they're even. Now we'll just do one more loop on each side and it's easy to make them the same size. We're gonna cut that off and then I'm just going to scrunch it up into the center. I'll take my chenille stem and wrap around that and then twist it until it's tight. This is going to give us such a pretty simple bow. I'm gonna trim that off and press those ends down and then we'll just fluff it up. To attach it, I'm gonna put down a little bit of hot glue at the top and then we'll just stick our bow down and with that, this project is finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this old pitcher that I found at Goodwill Outlet for 59 cents. Now it was cracked, it was dirty, nobody wanted it. It was on its last stop before the landfill and I felt blessed to find it. I love these old pieces and I know we can give it new life some floral foam, I got mine from the Dollar Tree, some leftover greenery and floral picks that I've had from other projects throughout the year, and this little bird pick that I've had in my stash since last year and just couldn't find the right project for. So y'all, when I show you these projects, I know that they're super simple. There's nothing, you know, extraordinary about what I do with these. I simply show them to you so that hopefully the next time you see an old piece at the thrift store or you know out beside the road that it'll give you some idea of something different that you can do with it. I loved this piece. Nobody else wanted it but it just kind of spoke to me. I take it and I put in some floral foam. Now I only put the floral foam in there because I think that it gives my piece stability. It helps me be able to get my floral pieces to stay where I want them to. You don't have to put it in there. You could just stuff your pieces in there. But to me, I like to be able to stick things at an angle and know it's going to stay. So I'm gonna put in some greenery. This greenery is some that y'all probably saw before. I got it from Goodwill Outlet. It was on the horn that I redid and I love using this. And then I'm just gonna start using some different pieces that I've had left over from other projects. This little bird pick, y'all, I love this piece so much and I have tried to use it in so many different projects, but I never liked how it fit in. But I think this one was the perfect one. He looks like he has made him a nest right in the middle of our Christmas greenery and I just absolutely love it. 
I add some color with a little bit of berries and then I poke in some of this frosted fern. I think that gives it a very soft look and that's really all I do. I just keep taking pieces, using up some of the stuff that I had left over and doing it until you know it's pleasing to the eye. You do what you like. Y'all, I love these simple kind of projects. Welcome aboard the Crafty Cruise Getaway, where creativity sets sail once again. Join us on Royal Caribbean's Mariner of the Seas, sailing out of the port of Galveston, Texas. Prepare to be dazzled as we stop in Costa Maya and in Cozumel. Just like our maiden voyage, we will host exclusive crafting workshops on sea days. We have some amazing projects lined up for you that guarantee something for everyone to enjoy. For the Crafty Cruise Getaway 2025, we're introducing our newest sponsor, We Create. Elevate your crafting with the state-of-the-art laser engraver and cutter, valued at over $1,500. We are thrilled to give away one of these amazing lasers as a door prize to one lucky participant. Mark your calendars for February 17th through the 22nd and join us on the Crafty Cruise Getaway for creativity, relaxation, and lasting memories. To book your spot, visit www.craftycruisegetaway.com. See you on board in 2025. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye y'all!